We were laughing again at our names. Me and Aaron yesterday. Uh -huh. Damien, Dylan, Dan, Daniel, Sean, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds like, a, I don't know. Nothing. I'm not going to say that. Filter. Okay. Now that we're live. Now that we're live. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's there's four people that, that are going to watch this. <laughs> it'll be us. Yeah, yeah it'll be, it be us rewatching it. Right, right. All right. <laughs> well, let us get going. Continuing on from yesterday, we're justifying even further by faith, not by what we do. Two times through, I think that's probably decent. We might be able to squeeze in a third. Yeah, we'll see. Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for these men. Thank you for my friendship with them. They are amazing. And I pray your deep and profound blessing over each of them, even the ones that aren't here today. God, thank you that we can gather with you freely to study your word, to listen to your voice. Pray you would speak to us. Thank you, Jesus. Pray this in your name. Amen. <laughs> All right. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because hope has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. Good morning, Sean. Good to see you. Good morning. We're in chapter 5, doing verse 1 through 11. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if we... If when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Who else would I'll, like I'll take, a, I'll take a pass through it. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in our hope in sharing the glory of God. More than that, we, re we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. While we were yet helpless at the right time, Jesus, <coughs> uh, excuse me, Christ had died for the ungodly. Why one will hardly die for a righteous man?
though perhaps for a good man, one will dare to even die. <laughs> I'm going to reread that sentence real quick. Um, sorry, let me just start at six. While we were yet helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Why <clears throat> one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man, one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we are now justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> through whom we have now received our reconciliation. <clears throat> this translation makes my head spin sometimes. Honestly, the passage is making my head spin. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. You want to go for a third? The language, the language is not helping. I could stand for a third time. Yeah, maybe someone with a more clear English translation. I'll do it. Okay. Dan, you want to go? <laughs> okay, I'll go. Okay. okay. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Though whom through whom we have also obtained access into grace um, in, in which we stand access into this grace grace okay and we rejoice in the hope of God's glory um, not only this but we also rejoice in sufferings in hope and sufferings knowing that it, um, suffering produces endurance and endurance, character, and character, hope. Huh. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person perhaps someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, because we have now been declared righteous by his blood, we will be saved through him from God's wrath. For if while we were still enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. How much more, since we have been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only this, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. I'm fascinated by how if you emphasize different words in one verse, how it means different things. Yeah. I've heard that is a really cool technique if you take exactly one verse and go through every single word. Whoa. Whoa. Right. Whoa. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's really interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Excuse me. I have a I have a note on the second verse. Through whom also we've obtained our introduction by faith into this grace which we stand. My little note says present tense. So as he's as he's discussing this and trying to convince these people 
He's not saying this is something that happened 16 generations ago. He's saying it's going on right now. We exult in the hope of the glory of God. The hope of God's glory. That's what mine says. We rejoice in the hope. So we stand in this grace right now and we rejoice in the hope of God's glory. What does the hope of God's glory mean? Would it not mean eternal salvation, eternal life? Maybe. Approval, if this book has anything to say about it. The hope of God's glory. The hope of being approved by him. Of hearing, well done, my good and faithful yeah, servant. Yeah. Yep. God's glory. Really? That's an interesting tie. It means being approved by him. How is that? What is the what does C S say about that? Oh. Let me think. Um, I've read that. <laughs> There's another line in here that I wanted to touch on. Glory. Being approved by him. Perhaps it seems rather crude to describe glory as the fact of being noticed by God, but this is the language of the New Testament. Paul promises to those who love God not only, not as we should expect, that they will know him, um, but that they will be known by him. This is 1 Corinthians 8.3. This is a strange promise. Does not God know all things at all times? But it is dreadfully re-echoed in a passage of the New, another passage of the New Testament. There we are warned that it may not happen to any one of us to appear at last before the face of God and hear the appalling words, I never knew you, depart from me. In some sense, as dark to the intellect as it is, unendurable to the feelings, we can both be banished from the presence of him who is present everywhere and erased from the knowledge of him who knows all. We can be left utterly and absolutely outside, repelled, exiled, estranged, finally and unspeakably ignored. On the other hand, we can be called in, welcome, welcomed, received, acknowledged. We walk every day on the razor's edge between those two incredible possibilities. Apparently then our lifelong nostalgia, our longing to be reunited with something in the universe from which we now feel cut off, to be on the inside of some door, which we have always seen from the outside, is no mere neurotic fantasy, fancy, but the truest index of our real situation. And to be at last summoned inside would be both glory and honor beyond all our merits, and also the healing of that old ache. Well stated. <clears throat> and where was that from? The weight of glory, C.S. Lewis. <clears throat> so the hope of glory is being, hope of God's glory is being <clears throat> known by him noticed acknowledged and if we are known and acknowledged he would never say away from me i never knew you at the pearly gates mm -hmm. <clears throat> a 
point that I thought was interesting too is going off on the same the same vein of glory or hope. Um, Paul, go, Paul <clears throat> wow, excuse me. Uh, Paul goes through the list. Suffering leads to endurance, endurance to character, character to hope. I've never quite when you hear hope in our generation, it's it's something like really superficial, like we all got a hope, you know, hope. <laughs> uh, ca- campaign slogan, slogan, yeah. like what, what what does that mean? I've never I've never heard like hope derived from character or something that's you know, we need to like hit ourselves against the world to develop for real sense of hope. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that a lot. Whoa. Oh, I thought <laughs> I thought my zoom was going down for a second. Yeah. No, that's 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 what I Cute. that that teaches you how Yeah. Suffering begets endurance and endurance character. And character <clears throat> And then if character you're... to hope that's a really i mean that's that's really profound to me because like real hope is born out of justified suffering what's what does character mean in this context what's that word <laughs> and t- and person's like ho- the whole well, in my mind, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but in my mind, it means the the entirety of a of a person that is that has been um, effective through life and lived a good, decent life up to that point. If that makes sense, and yeah. it's the kind of person that encounters situations and responds correctly. <clears throat> that has been born. In the fire, the fires of life, their character. What is that like in a in a kiln or a fire? The dross comes up, and the it's like their character has been forged through trials and and years of responding in ways that are aligned with God's will, perhaps. Yeah. Ah, character. Maybe it's the it's the um, the molding of us into Christ's likeness. His character. And that's a journey. Sure. That makes sense. S- sanctification. Well, yeah, and I think... <laughs> If you know, if you if if you experience sufferings, and it could go two ways, you could either persevere through that, or you don't. And then if you persevere, that creates a certain kind of character, right? And to have that certain kind of character to persevere through suffering that kind of requires a hope that he's talking about earlier of, of God's glory of, of being known by God and, and getting getting to that other side of the razor razor's edge right and then um, and then when he says that hope does not disappoint us because to have that hope, you must realize the love that God has given us and shown us through his Holy Spirit. Do that last part again. So the hope, because this caught my attention, because he, he goes through you know perseverance, character, and hope, and hope doesn't disappoint. You know, it can't disappoint us. You know, 
all those other, and I kind of read it as all those other things could disappoint us. You know, somebody's character, somebody's level of perseverance, somebody's, you know, suffering or our amount of suffering. You know, those those things can disappoint us, but if we get all the way down to that last bit of hope, it won't disappoint us because it's it's God. We we can only have that hope if we know know God's grace and experience the love that He shows us and acknowledge it for what it is. So the hope. So go ahead. Oh, you you first, I guess. I was just gonna connect that to. So we go back to the hope of God's glory. He's saying that. Rejoice in the hope, but also rejoice in the suffering because it ultimately leads to hope. Mm-hmm. And that the hope of God's glory is really the the revelation, the comprehension in our minds, and the surrender to the fact that we're accepted and loved by God. Is that right? That's what the hope is. The hope mm-hmm. of God's glory, talked about earlier, accepted. Yeah, <laughs> and I think, I think it requires faith, too. Because faith, faith is required for the grace that God gives us, too. And that's ultimately what we're hoping for, is, is grace enough and, and the ability to know God and be known by him. Before I, the gift, go ahead. Yeah, before I realized that it was biblical, I was going to push back on that a little bit and be like, "What about dashing one's hopes against the rocks of disappointment?" But then I realized, this is hope in the rock, our God. This is not hope in other people or other circumstances or things like that. That's human nature, even if you get your hope bashed against the rocks, that you stand back up, dust yourself off, and hope more. Yeah. Hmm. Now, the other thing that stood out to me to finish that sentence is verse 5. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given us. I guess at that point, a lot of those people didn't know or didn't understand what the Holy Spirit was, correct? They were learning. I would assume so, yeah. Yeah. Because this was early on after that. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit was extremely evident. It's like, yes, Jesus, I accept your work that you did. Blam, suddenly they're speaking in tongues and doing all these amazing things. And And where was it that he went that they didn't know of that? And there was a laying on of hands and boom, like you just said. Right. So this is a totally new concept. I want to say that was in Antioch. Oh, I remember, but I don't remember exact names. Way back. I want to make one point on uh, what Daniel just said about the line about dashing, dashing your hopes mm-hmm. against the rock. What, what was that line again? Oh, it was just the, this this verse. I was going to push back on it before I realized it was a biblical concept was that we always put, or we always find that or sometimes we find that our hopes are dashed against rocks before we realize that 
the one thing we can put our hope in is the rock. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and that's what I was thinking about this this idea yesterday, the difference between um, trying trying to achieve happiness through things of the world is always going to be a losing proposition. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to this interview and I forget the guy's name, but he put it, he put it like this. He said, we are, we are beings that can only be truly happy through um, the faith in and love for God. And if we, tr- if we try to, if we try to achieve happiness through anything else in the world, um, we're going to, we're going to need more of it. There's an escalation there. You think of alcoholism you, know, you have a couple beers. Oh, I feel good. The next day, one more beer, and then it just escalates into alcohol. It doesn't have to be alcohol. It could be food, gluttony. It can be um, the sin of sloth, like just being, being lazy and just watching TV. You know, it could be any number of things, but, the common category is things of the world and things of God. And he, he likened it to like, if you, if you have a computer and you, the only way to make it work is to plug it into the wall, but you, but you try to plug it into a potato or an apple or like anything you, anything except for the wall, it's not going to work. And then we wonder why we're not happy. (laughs) I just, I thought that was, I thought that was a uh, funny, in true analogy, sure. Plugging, yeah. plugging it. Okay, you said plugging a potato into a wall. Yeah. No, no. If you have a computer, oh, and you're trying to and you're trying to turn the computer on, like the computer is you. Okay. You're, like you're trying to be happy. You're trying to make this computer work. There's only one way to make the computer work, and that's to plug it into, oh, into a electrical socket. Yeah. And, trying to plug it into anything except for an electrical socket. You now see how, how crazy and stupid that is, but right. that's how, that's how human beings work too. So like you that. plug, you plug it into the potato and then you're disappointed. You're like, what the right. heck? I thought this was going to make me work. And that's, that's what drinking is like to make you happy. Like that's what thing, things of the world are exactly like that. But the computer example just makes it, makes you realize how, how crazy it is. You know, that's pretty awesome. But yeah. Anyway, I feel, like I, did, I feel like I did watch one YouTuber make an entire wall of lemons and wire them together, and he was able <laughs> to get it to actually start charging his phone. It was pretty cool. <laughs> get a life. Get a oh, life. He, oh, he has a life. He, that's his life is making crazy YouTube videos of doing crazy experiments like that. So what you're saying is, funny. is that we eat enough french fries will actually be happy <laughs> I think that's partially true for me <laughs> sorry lord I do like french fries but uh, yeah I mean and, and yeah going back to the going back to the hope thing character produces hope hope uh, what makes sense to me is hope is the like true hope in God is is what animates someone with good character. Because mm. it start, it starts with suffering. It's like well, you need you need a why before you can really have solid motivation to like navigate life sufferings. It it really helps to have a nice solid reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and I th- I think once once you get to the to the pinnacle like someone of good moral character the base the base of that their why is properly placed hope in god and that's that's what it's the roadmap of someone with good character and that's that's what motivates someone with good character if that hopefully that makes sense Here's another interesting concept, too, of somebody that would die for somebody else. Um, Would you die to save the life of Hitler? Probably not. Would you die to save the life of your daughter? Probably so. But yet Christ died for every single person. 
willingly. Yeah, that's a good way to, to really have it hit home. It's like, what would make you die for somebody? Mm-hmm. I was a little bit confused by, I think it was verse 7, um, where he says, not many people would die for a righteous man, but for a good man, maybe. I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. what? I don't understand yeah. this. True. That surprised yeah. me, too. That one got me, too. Yeah. Um, what, I was going to ask, what are the meanings of the Greek words righteous and good in Romans 5? What's the verse? 7, maybe? I'm unable to check right now. Seven. Yeah, seven. <clears throat> oh. Oh. I have my chat GPT in the wrong setting. It can browse the internet and collate information from the internet or it can just pull from its own brain and I have it to go from the internet so it takes a second because it has to read things. Oh my goodness. It's per- per- producing perseverance in me, this suffering. <laughs> hmm. Maybe... Maybe it's no one would die for a righteous man because they already realize he's already been died for. Hmm. Or they think he doesn't require somebody to die for him kind of thing. Hmm. Like, is that... Is that what it's... Yeah, In my mind, right. righteous and good are the same. Like, interchangeable, almost. Right. Righteous... Righteous means something in the Book of Romans. Um, it's early on. Uh... Romans 1. It's looking at my notes. Don't you all just love to stare at his forehead while he's pondering great thoughts? It's just, it's just emanating, you know. Of course, it's better than some of those ratty old hats. <laughs> True. Oh, I like the hats. Those are fun. They're fashionable, at least. I can't find it. Um, okay, but look, what is? Let's see. ChatGPT says, "Righteous, dike, dikeau, dikeau," derived from the word dikeus, which signifies being correct, righteous, or by implication, innocent used to describe someone who is just and lawful and in right standing especially in a more moral and ethical sense and good so someone who's innocent and justified essentially and then a, a good is agathau it's the original greek while the um agathau is used to describe intrinsic goodness benevolence or a kind-hearted disposition. So there's someone who's righteous and justified and innocent. And then there's someone who is good, which means that they have an intris- intrinsic goodness to them. Daniel, you may hit it when you said the righteous, he knows where he's going and somebody doesn't have to die for him. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I found 
<clears throat> found one one explanation of it. This is on BibleStudyTools.com, but it says um, there is a righteous man that is good, and there is a righteous man that is not good. But he that is good for heaven and the creatures, i.e. for God and men, that this is a righteous good man. But he that is good to God and evil to men, this is a righteous man that is not good. Is that even so, possible? Uh, yeah, that's where... So maybe that's that's where they're trying to say like okay the righteous man is the good the good man to both god and people and then the good man is only good to god or and not people or something something kind of like that okay so he's like he's he's grouping classifying people into three groups and there's there's the, the one who is good to god and good to people and he's saying that person someone may die for that person and then there's the guy who's good to god but not good to people would be like a pharisee a bad pharisee right and he's saying uh probably most people wouldn't die for that person and then there's the person who is not good to god and not good to people the ungodly mm -hmm. is the first he mentions and christ actually died for that person the worst of all three right we definitely wouldn't die for a sinner, <laughs> yeah. is what he's saying. It's like, it's uh -huh. a scale of... Right. Yeah. Lowest to highest. You know, it blows me away. I know we're running over here. Um, I guess the last thing I just wanted to say was this has kept coming up in my mind as we've been talking like not only did he die right for all three because none of them because all of them fell short but he took the the brunt of god's wrath hmm. for everyone upon himself like one thing to die and then it's another thing to die uh, in the terrible um, I don't know what the word is like receipt of, of God's wrath upon humanity like I can't even imagine even for one person to, to feel God's wrath you take that C.S. Lewis definition of glory and being outside glory is to be completely ignored and erased from memory, from the memory of God. And you pair that with one of Jesus' final words on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And to think, man, he was hanging up there being ignored by God. Maybe that's where the idea fully God and fully man comes. See, he experienced fully what it was, you know, the, the, the difficulty of being a man at the same time, being, being God. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very cool idea. Yeah. And to think that, like, he, I think I have to think about this all the time, just for my own, just for my own sake and my own, like, doubts. Um, 
Peter, the top apostle, denied Christ in the final, when it mattered the most. <laughs> and not only once, but three times. Like, really, when, when the Bible wants to drive something home, it always happens in threes. Um, and then Christ himself was, the man was denied on the cross. By God, the Father. Yeah. Not not ultimately, but in the moment, even even God, even even the Word made flesh was denied. Like that's that's a really powerful idea. But I think about that when I when I think of oh my my own doubts and why doesn't you know when, whenever whenever my faith is not super strong I think I think about that. Like well the people that had. Christ right in front of them didn't they 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 went through the exactly the same sorts of things and they had Christ right in front of them <laughs> so it's just the it's just the human condition yeah so if the father denied the son in that moment then you could say that God denied himself I guess Mm -hmm. And doesn't Paul also say that? Deny yourself, take up your cross. Or was that Jesus that said that? I think that was Jesus. That Jesus. sounds like Jesus, yeah. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Well, I gotta get going, guys. Yeah, so, yeah. so do I. After. John, right. it's good to have you back among us. Yeah, I was about to text you to see if you're still alive. Same. Good to be back. Woke yeah. up thinking, hmm, do they need somebody to bring over groceries or anything? Is it a yeah. COVID lockdown or something? I don't know. <laughs> no, it was, it was bad for two days, but pray for this little one. Okay. She, she started feeling yeah. a little bad last night, so. All right. Well, let's pray right now. Let's do it. God, I bring Judah before you right now. I pray you would touch her body. Mm -hmm. You have her in the palm of your hand, and I pray your healing over her right now. Yes. Clear up anything that she's showing. Keep her mind clean and clear of all confusion. God, I pray you would just heal her right now. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hi. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Have a great day, everybody. Have a good one. Love you guys. See you guys here.